Today we study the letter of St. James, chapter 1, verses 1 to 27. In opening his letter, he simply calls himself James, a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the time James wrote his letter, the slave was owned by his master. He was totally possessed by his master. This is what James meant. James was possessed by Christ. The slave existed for his master. He had no personal rights whatsoever. The same was true with James. He existed only for Christ. His rights were the rights of Christ only. The slave served his master and he existed only for the purpose of service. He was at the master's disposal any hour of the day. So it was with so it was with James. He lived only to serve Christ hour by hour and day by day. Finally, there is a most precious thing that James meant by a slave of Jesus Christ. That is, he had the highest and most honored profession in the entire world. Men of God have always been called the servants of God. It was the highest title and honor. James says that Jesus, the carpenter from Nazareth, was the Lord Jesus Christ. By Lord, curious, he meant God. By Christ, Christos, he meant the Messiah. The point is this. James is saying that the Lord Jesus Christ is God, the very Son of God who is equal to God the Father. After introducing himself, James focused on the reality in a Christian's life. The path of life is not an easy path to walk. It is filled with all kinds of trials and temptations. Trials such as sickness, disease, accidents, disappointments, sorrows, suffering, and death, and temptations. What we need is a sure way to conquer all the trials and temptations of life. According to James, there are ways to conquer and triumph in this life, no matter how severe the trial or temptation. The first one is to possess a spirit of joy and perseverance as we face the trials and temptations of life. The Greek word used for temptations or trials throughout champs means to tempt, to try, to test, to prove. That is, the temptations and trials of life are to prove us. They are for a beneficial purpose. They are permitted by God for a good purpose. When we conquer temptation, we become a much more pure person, more holy, righteous, and just. When we triumphantly go through the trials of life, we become a much stronger person, more steadfast, enduring, and persevering. When we stand up against trials and temptations, we become a lively witness to all those who will see us. We 
demonstrate the living presence and power of Christ that he actually does live in our hearts and lives and is going to give us eternal life. Secondly, the attitude needed to face the trials and temptations of life is joy. How is this possible? How can a believer be joyful when facing such trials as disease, accidents, pain, sorrows, disappointments, suffering, pain, and death? When facing the seductions of temptations, joy is usually not what fills our heart when we face these things. When severe trials come our way, too often we despair and become discouraged and defeated. There is only one way to face trials and temptations with a spirit of joy. We have to switch our thinking turn our attitudes about trials and temptation completely around. We have to quit thinking negatively and think positively. We must know that trials and temptation work patience. We must know that trials and temptations are not to defeat and discourage us, but to prove us to make us much stronger and more pure and righteous. The believer is to know that the trials and temptations will make him strong just like Jesus. Then we must let patience work within us. Patience means to be steadfast, to persevere, and to endure. So to James, patience means to persevere and keep on pers persevering, never giving in. To take the initiative and to exert the energy and effort to conquer and to gain the victory and to triumph over the trial and temptation. The results of facing trials and temptations can be wonderful. First, when a person stands against trials and temptations and conquers them, he perfects the purpose God intended. That is, he becomes a stronger a more pure person, a person who is a little more like Jesus. Second, a person becomes more complete. He also eliminates more weaknesses, more flaws, more defects, and more shortcomings. Trials and temptations are common, are common to us all. We all suffer such trials and temptations as pain, lust, disease, divorce, lust, cheating, hurt, greed, accidents, death, sickness, separation, disappointments, immorality, emptiness, anger, loneliness, lying. How can a believer conquer trials and temptations? First, he must ask wisdom of God according to St. James. Wisdom means far more than just knowledge, far more than just being intellectual about life or some area of life. Wisdom is not having a head full of facts. It is not only seeing and knowing on about life. Wisdom is not only seeing and knowing the truth. In contrast, wisdom grabs the great truth of life. 
It sees the trials and temptations that surround life and death. God and man, time and eternity, good and evil, the dear things of the universe and of God. Not only that, wisdom also knows what to do about them. Wisdom acts and conquers and gains the victory over the trials and temptations. Asking wisdom of God is the way to conquer the trials and, and temptations of life. When we ask God for wisdom, God will give us wisdom. God will give us an abundance of wisdom. God will not reproach or rebuke us for not knowing how to handle the trial or of temptation. The idea is that God will not even question us for lacking wisdom and for not knowing what to do. God loves us. We are His sons and daughters. He is our Father, and He wants to meet our every need. Therefore, God will hear our request. He will give us the wisdom to conquer the trials and temptations of life. St. James advises us that when we ask God for wisdom, we should ask in faith. In other words, God cannot hear and answer a person who wavers in his faith. We must believe that God is, that He exists, and that He does love and care for us, and that He will hear and answer us when we ask for wisdom to face the trials and temptations of life. Then St. James gives us the second aspect of how a believer can conquer trials and temptations. That is, he must rejoice in his status in life. It does not matter whether a person is poor or rich, healthy or unhealthy, he is to rejoice in the Lord. First, the believer of lowly status is to rejoice in the Lord. This does not mean that he is to rejoice because he is poor, unhealthy, or crippled. It means that he rejoices in Christ despite the circumstances, no matter how terrible. Every human being, no matter how lowly, is needed to make his contribution to society and the world. Rejoicing in one's status in life is one of the ways to conquer the trials and temptations of life. Second, according to St. James, the believer of rich or high status in life is to rejoice in that he is made low by God. First, a rich a high person is not accepted by God because of who he is or what he has. His rich and high status means absolutely nothing to God. The rich and high have to approach God as nothing and as having nothing. Approaching him as the little children, poor, and without anything. This is the only way God accepts any person. Therefore, the rich and high are no better, are, are no better off than the poor and lowly. All men, no matter their status in life, stand before God as equals. In addition, a rich and hired person must yield all that he has 
and needs to help meet the desperate needs of the starving, impoverished, diseased, homeless, sinful, dying, and lost of the world. Jam must emphasize that this fact cannot be neglected, ignored, or explained away. St. James continues to give the third aspect of how can a believer conquer trials and temptations. That is, he must remember the reward for enduring. He shall be blessed and shall receive a crown of life. The person who endures temptations shall be blessed. This refers to this life, to the here and now. It can be in word and especially joy and satisfaction, an inner assurance and confidence that carries one through all the trials and temptations of life, no matter the pain, sorrow, or grief. The person shall receive the crowd of life in the next world. The person who loves the Lord is the person who endures. He is the person who is faithful to the Lord. He follows and obeys the Lord, doing all that the Lord commands. He follows Christ, obeying his commandments, and enduring on the trials and temptations of this life. In the next section, St. James helps defy for us where temptation comes from. Sometimes the desire and craving for things upon the earth are almost unbearable. We see something and we know that it is wrong, that we should not have it or do it, but the design and craving become so strong that we can hardly stand it. The craving may be for things such as having one's own way, doing one's own thing, food, immortal sex, persistent or advancement, recognition or authority, alcohol, cigarettes, pornography, clothes, possessions. Temptation is not of God. Man is always blaming someone else for tempting him and leading him into sin. When Adam and Eve fell into sin, God found Adam and asked him what had happened. Adam, trying to escape the guilt, did just what all of us would like to do. He said, the woman whom you put here with me, she gave me food from the tree, so I ate it. The point is this, man seldom takes responsibility for his own wrongdoing. Man blames woman, and woman blames man. Spouse blames spouse, child blames parent, and parent blames child. The student blames the teacher, and the teacher blames the school. Partner blames partner, employer blames employee, and employee blames employer. What we do is justify our behavior by blaming someone other than ourselves. But note what we have done. We have blamed God. How? By wondering why God ever let such a thing happen to us. For example, marry such a spouse have such a terrible accident by thinking that God created us with desires and passions. Therefore, when we fall here and there, He will understand 
and forgive us. By thinking that God made the world as it, as it is, therefore, if we indulge here and there, He will understand and forgive us. Of course, God did create all things, and He created us with desires and cravings. God created food, and He gave us a desire for food, so that we would eat and take care of our bodies. God gave man and woman, God gave man to woman, and woman to man, so that they would keep the human race going and would build companionship, trust, and family. But God did not make us to desire and then to desire for more and more, to crave and then to crave for more and more. The point to note is this. Temptation begins with the normal and natural desires of man and with his thoughts. A person sees, smells, tastes, hears, touches, or thinks about something. Something that is forbidden and harmful. And he fails to turn away and flee from it. Instead of fleeing, the person allows his mind to conceive the thing. He pictures the pleasure and begins to desire or lust after it. Sin is born. The wrong is committed right there in his mind. His heart is set upon the forbidden thing. He may never do the act, but he would if he had the chance and courage. There are some suggestive ways to overcome temptation. If the temptation attacks our thoughts, then we must push the wrong thought out of our mind and then begin to immediately focus our thoughts upon Christ and some passage of Scripture. If the temptation comes from some attraction to our sense, seeing, hearing, tasting, and touching, then we must turn our head or body away and flee the temptation. Then, immediately, we must focus upon Jesus Christ and prayer and review some scripture passage. St. James affirms us that there is the result of lust and enticement, death. Man dies physically, spiritually, and eternally because of sin. When God created man, He did not create man to die. Man had chosen to die, and he dies because of sin. Finally, in a very descriptive passage, St. James suggests there are several preparations that must be made in order to overcome temptations. First, be quick to hear the Word of God. The greatest temptation in the world is for a person to walk through life doing what he wants to please. And in that way, ignoring, neglecting, and rejecting God. The result is death. Therefore, if a person is to be delivered from the great temptation that will doom his soul, he must prepare himself. He must be quick to hear the word of God. He must make sure that he hears the word of God. How can a person make sure that he hears the word of God? St. James gives us some suggestions. He must be slow to speak. This means that a person must be willing to listen instead of, of speaking his own ideas about right and wrong. He must be willing to listen to God's word instead of insisting upon what he thinks. 
Second, he must be slow to wrath or anger. A person must not react against what God says about temptation and sin, nor about what God says about salvation. If a person reacts against God's plan of salvation and follow his own plan, he is dooming himself. In addition, a person must not become angry and act against others in wrath. An angry person just cannot do what God says. He cannot live righteously nor receive the righteousness of God's salvation. Third, he must put aside on filthiness. If he enjoys the dirt and, and filth, then his mind is going to be on it. His mind will not be clear, not enough to hear the word of God. Preparation number two, become the doer, the word of God. The person who hears and does the word of God is blessed. A person who does and lives the word of God will discover love, joy, and peace. Preparation number three, bridle and control the tongue. If a person thinks that he is religious and he does not bridle his tongue, he deceives himself. No matter what he thinks or professes, his religion is empty. He does not please God. Preparation number four. Practice pure religion and visit the needy. This certainly would apply to visiting all who have need within a community. Those who are orphaned, widowed, shut in, bedridden, lonely, newcomers, fatherless or motherless, grieved. Whatever the need, God expects us to visit them. He expects us to reach all within our community. And in the final point, St. James suggests a person must keep himself unstained from the world. Jesus said in the Sermon of the Mount, Blessed are the clean, blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. So to conclude our lesson today, we remember that Jesus very much on the mount and bless us all we if we can keep our hearts clean and understand from the word for we shall see God. So thank you very much for listening our lesson.